I'm not particularly experienced in VR, and maybe that's why I'm standing here. I, I've had a chance um, up here at Sundance to see some incredible work, um, some of the stuff that you saw up here, and uh, some of the things that I've, I've just found so, so inspiring. Um, and I've had absolutely no experience in, in what it takes to make that stuff, but I'm very interested to try. Um, <laughs> But uh, what I do have some experience in is, uh, you know, I've worked in, in movies and TV and stuff since I was little, and uh, the overlap I see between movies and TV and, and virtual reality is, is storytelling. And I guess that's what, you know, we've heard over and over again tonight while we're talking about is, how do you tell a story in, in virtual reality? What's that going to mean? Um, and, and I'll say, I think it's awesome that we're here at Sundance, that, that a company, a tech company here, like, that Oculus did an event here at Sundance, because the movie industry is a large and diverse place, and uh, Sundance really focuses on good stories, whereas, uh, you know, other parts of the movie industry, um, not so much, you know, so, uh, so I'm really happy that you guys are here, I think it's so cool, and I, I just, I, I'm a new frontier alumnus, and I love seeing New Frontier exploding with all the virtual reality. I love seeing it, and it's, I, I love that we're here. I hope, we, I hope we keep virtual reality happening here at Sundance for years yeah. to come. Oh, yeah. so, so one thing I think you know, we can all probably agree on is that technology <coughs> defines storytelling. And uh, this is true for all kinds of technologies from back to the beginning of what makes human beings human beings, in my, in my opinion, I'm not an anthropologist, but, but I, I think that the ability to tell a story is kind of, that's sort of the line I draw in my mind of where we became human and not something else other than human. Um, and, uh, and, and the technology is always there, and I, I, I consider, for example, like the invention of spoken language, that's, that's an old technology. And that obviously changed storytelling a lot. Um, then the invention of written language. And then you have, you know, the printing press. You have theaters. And you have uh, the invention of movies and things like that. And, um, you know, these technologies, they're not just neutral uh, distribution platforms for a story. They, they change the story. Uh, that's the, you know, the McLuhan quote is the medium is the message and I, I really think that's true um, you know one example is like in a play there's a limited number of sets you can have in a play so the scenes are longer and there's fewer of them whereas in a movie you can have lots of sets and so the scenes are shorter and there's more of them and and so that that's just one small example of how the technology doesn't just hand you the story the technology impacts what the story is um, so the question is how, is, how is virtual reality going to, to change story time? Um, and I thought just now I'd, I'd sort of think about one particular element or device uh, in storytelling that goes back forever, uh, and one that uh, I am personally quite interested in being an actor. And, and that is the device of the protagonist. What's going to happen to the protagonist? in virtual reality? This is a really interesting question to me. Um, and you know, you, you find the protagonist, of course, in all these different mediums, um, in the oral tradition, in, in the written word, in, in theater plays, or in movies, there's protagonists. And the protagonists function differently depending on that technology. Like, like in a novel, the protagonist can go on and on for pages and pages, and even sometimes chapters and chapters, just articulating their own internal thought process. You can't really do that so much in theater or in a movie. Uh, in theater, you know, you're more reliant on dialogue. And, um, and in a movie, of course, there's lots of great dialogue in movies, but in a movie, because you can cut in here, you don't even need the dialogue. You know, the story can hinge, and in fact, often the most cinematic moments hinge on, on a silent moment where there is no dialogue. It's just a subtle little facial expression. Um, so protagonists change with all of these technologies. So that brings me back. What, what's going to be the protagonist's function, modus operandi, in, in, in VR? And um, from, from what I've gathered so far, it seems there's almost like a fork in the road. There's almost two different branches. And in some of the VR experiences, 
uh, I as the viewer, I watch the protagonist. And then in some of the VR experiences, I, I am the protagonist. And those are two very different things, right? And, and the ones where I watch the protagonist, those are closer to movies, or actually they're probably even closer to theater. Um, and that's, that's a pattern that recurs. You know, whenever a new technology emerges, usually the first bunch of stuff that people try are kind of like the old way. You know, the first movies um, were sort of like moving photographs or um, plays that were filmed. But as new generations came and inherited the technology, the art of movie making developed its own language and its own devices. And that took like a hundred years. Um, and by the way, a hundred years ago, there were some people that were saying, movies, that's like a novelty, that's not art, you know. Um, and look what happened to movies. Um, so the, 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 um, the question is, what, what's it going to be in VR? And, and um, when, when, you, uh, when you are the protagonist, that's completely different than watching the protagonist. And I, I feel like, and I don't know, but I feel like that's where VR really kind of becomes its own self and is no longer uh, deriving itself from movies or theater and stuff, but is doing something completely new, is, is when I, the viewer, I am the protagonist. But I have no idea how that's going to work, because how do you tell a story if you, the storyteller, can't present the protagonist. You know, if the viewer is controlling the protagonist, how do, you, how do you tell a story where at the beginning the protagonist is one way and then he or she goes on a journey and learns something and by the end of the story uh, is, is new, is, is changed. I don't know how you do that uh, if the viewer is the protagonist and I, I don't have an answer. Um, but I'm really, really curious to see, see what unfolds. And, um, What's exciting to me is, so, is to be in this room with so many of you folks who are the ones that are figuring it out. And, and I think the only way probably we're going to figure it out is to just try stuff and make a bunch of things. And that's why it's so cool just to see you guys making so much stuff and trying things and seeing how it feels to experience them and watch them. And uh, it, 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 it inspires the hell out of me. And, uh, and uh, all I can say is if... Uh, if I can jump in, if, if I can be of some assistance, um, call me up, because I can't wait to get involved in, in doing this stuff. So thanks.